Hey there Dev Squad, Ryan here. In today's video, we'll be adding a few basic levels for level selection, basic main menu, a new game mode, and we'll be finishing up our host server UI to make it look a little bit nicer. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder. We're going to name this Maps. Once you've created your Maps folder, go up here to File, New Level, and then let's select the default level. Okay, so we're going to click Save Current, find our Maps folder, and we're going to name this Multiplayer Main Menu. Now inside this main menu, we're just going to do one thing, and that thing is grabbing a camera, placing it kind of in the middle of the level, and we can move it up, and that's perfect. And we're just going to attach our character to this camera so that they have a static viewpoint rather than a character running around in the level. So to do that, we're going to go to Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint, and then inside of here, on Event Begin Play, we're going to Git Controller. There we go. And from here, we're going to blend, so set view target with blend. We're going to grab a reference to our camera by clicking on it in the level, right clicking here and creating a reference. Once you have a reference, we're just going to click and drag over into the new view target. We're going to leave the blend time at zero and all of the rest of the settings as default. Then we're just going to click save, compile, and let's press play, see what happens. Perfect. So now our character is sitting in one spot and can't move, and that's exactly what we wanted. So next, we're going to add a few placeholder levels so that we can choose maps. If you want to use any pre-built levels that you have, you can go ahead and skip this step. So I'm just going to file, create new level, and then use the default. And then we're going to go over here to Save Current, make sure it's in our Game Maps folder, and then we're going to type in Level 1. Now inside Level 1, we're just going to do a few things. Actually, just we're going to get a text render. We're going to drag this out here. And then inside of the Details panel, let's just type in Level 1. Make sure this text is decently big so you can see it, and then we're going to change the render color to black. Move this over a bit, turn it around, and now we can tell which level we have transitioned into. So I'm going to do the same thing with level 2 and level 3, and then we'll continue to our transition map. So now that we have our three maps, we're going to create one more. Let's just add new, level, and this one can be blank. We're going to type in transition map. We can save this. Perfect, we have a blank map. And we can go ahead and navigate back to our main menu. Now next, we want to go up into edit, project settings, and we're going to set the transition map, the editor and game startup map, and the server default map. And we can find those inside Map and Modes. And let's just scroll down here, and as you can see, there is Editor Startup Map. We're just going to choose our main menu. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing for the Game Startup Map. Now we need to set the Transition Map, so let's just type in Transition. And let's do the same thing for server default. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new game mode. And we're going to use our multiplayer game mode as a base for this. Well, rather, we're just going to copy from this. So let's just type in main menu GM. Okay, so once we've created this, we just want to hop into it. And then we're going to change our default pawn class back to default. It should just be pawn. So 
actually search for pawn and then set that as our pawn. And we can save and compile that. And now we want to go into our world settings in our main menu. And it looks like we're already on that level. So we're just going to go into our game mode, override, and then we're going to select the main menu GN. And we can save. And now we'll move on to our host server UI. Let's just open up our host server UI. All right, so let's get started by adding a border to the back of our overlay so that we can get some kind of background image. So let's just drag a border out into some blank space. And then we're going to anchor it to the middle. We will set the position to negative 250 by negative 150. And then we're going to set the size X to 500 and the size Y to 300. Okay. Next, we're just going to drag our overlay into our border. And now we have a background image. So let's go into our border. Let's change the brush color to something more like a dark gray. There we go. Okay. And now we can start on getting our little options here looking a bit better. So let's start with this server settings. And we're going to pad this on the top by, let's say, 35. We're trying to get it right underneath this X right here. That looks about perfect. OK, and then we're going to go into our typeface, change it to light. And last thing we want to do with this thing is just on the bottom add a 5 padding. So next, we can go into our default server. And we're just going to do the same thing here. We're just going to add a padding 5 on the top, 5 on the bottom, and then 5 on the top, 5 on the bottom. And now down here with our combo box, same thing. However, we are going to change the typeface to light. All right. And the last thing we're going to do is... Um, Actually, not the last thing, but close to the last thing. We're going to add another padding, top and bottom, on our button. And then we're going to go into our host text, and we're going to change the color and opacity to a black. And then the typeface to light. Okay. We can save and compile that. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to change the button color in here to something like a little bit more gray. Not as dark as our background, obviously, because we don't want it to blend in, but we want it to be a little bit different. So here we go. And then we're going to change the X, actually, to a light type face as well. So we can go ahead and save and compile that, because that is the end of this video. So that's the end of this video, everyone. I hope you learned something. And in the next video, we'll be starting on the functionality of our Find Servers widget. Thanks for watching, stay awesome, and keep creating.